Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry, no fancy outfit today. My normal gorilla shirt though, and just a baseball cap. Actually going to work out, as many of the, those in the WhatsApp group know. <laughs> I've been working out, personal trainer, trying to get in the best shape of my life for, um, just for health purposes, just trying to see what I can push in that realm. Although, with all the travel schedule, real quick, I want to tell you, update, Lone Star Audio Fest, going to be going to that this weekend. Then, the audio show in Costa Mesa. Then, Seattle. And I may do some stop-offs on the way. Maybe stop off and see Robert in Sacramento. Uh, maybe another audiophile. Who knows? Um, lots of travel in June. So, I don't know why I'm <laughs> working out right now. I'm trying to get some workouts in because I'm not going to be in town at all. Hardly. Uh, in June. And I think I have even more trips for family-oriented stuff as well. So, this is crazy month. Anyway, wanted to wrap up, though, before I get too far in the weeds with the Munich Audio Show. And what I normally do is do music clips, my favorite music. And one of my subscribers, as I told you, was religiously each day creating a playlist from the rooms that I went to. So, definitely appreciate his hard work. And I've already translated to Kobuz and mostly also to Tidal uh, his playlist from each day. So it'll say Audiophile Junkie. I think if you research that, and it'll have Munich High End, and then day one, day two, day three, and you can match it up better with my reports and rooms if you've been following along on that playlist. And I wanted to take uh, this moment as well to put an addendum to my other two videos where certain brand names i just run, run out of time and forget about all the things i have over 100 videos in that playlist there's so many i could mention so just because i leave them out of those two summary videos doesn't mean they weren't deserving i did wrap ups at the end of each day so make sure you watch those but a few that popped up as i was reviewing myself that i should have mentioned uh steinway lingdorf i should have mentioned them as well as meridian those were two brands that really push the envelope in terms of DSP active room correction. Those were very influential brands to me when I heard what they could do that taught me that this eventually is the way. Now, it's been a lot slower, but as we saw, another brand I should have mentioned was YG, now doing active models with the amplification included and DSP. That's a big, uh, noteworthy thing to pay attention to because when you think of the biggest brands that people think best of the best the yg magico wilson that ilk of the box speaker realm this is really the first one of those companies that's now doing active with dsp what more can a lot of these companies do to push the tr traditional passive box speaker any full further forward so the fact that you now have one of those big players doing active and DSP. And I didn't have a long time in that room and they were playing some pretty esoteric recordings, but I still think they're deserving of mention. And even some smaller rooms, I do encourage you to watch that entire playlist because almost all my videos were great. There's only one room that caused my ears to hurt and I'll tell you that one in a second. But there was one, uh, Vermeer with uh, Sybil Tone. I went into that room just because I heard uh, Under Pressure, one of my favorite songs by Queen, but I heard a live version of it, which isn't that good sounding from an audiophile perspective, but it still made me gravitate to that room, very small room, but that was a very innovative speaker with an AMT coaxial, I think, active, 300 Bs, and then an innovative, just a brush for record brush made of cashmere, thumbs up on that, and then the uh, record cleaner was pretty cool, uh, great people in that room. So there's so many of those videos I encourage you to watch. There's almost no company that I went into where it was a total disappointment. Like I said, there was one demo that I think I even mentioned it in one of my day-end show reports. The Burmester speakers, for whatever reason, don't resonate with me. I love their electronics, their aesthetics, their their... Uh, they, they have a history in the industry that's, you know, up there with the very best. Uh, but I know 3MA has had their speaker and it didn't resonate uh, with their customers and them for very long as well. And now this was another chance to hear a demo of a different model of their speaker. It just didn't resonate with me. So, you know, I have to call it like I see it. <laughs> the speakers aren't my type. They're electronics. Phenomenal. Um, I love the looks, probably among the best in terms of chassis design and some of the performance that my friends have bought, Burmester. So nothing against 
the brand as a whole, but the speakers just don't resonate with me. They were just hurting my ears. <laughs> and actually, people in the room with me, behind me, even before the demo was over, was getting up and telling the guy that these didn't sound right. They sounded bright, especially on the song they were playing. So that was the only room that I would call out for disappointing on performance metrics, even get, considering all the variables of the show. You know, no, none of the showrooms I would put at pinnacle of performance, you're going to get better performance in your room. And it also piggybacks into what I said about the IO design um, speaker that I loved a lot. It's not that what I heard in that room is better when I come back here and listen to those same songs because I have a dedicated room. I have the box that gives me that three-dimensional space. Yes, I still like this better in an empirical comparison, but what the IO designs gave me was that size and traits, combination of traits and that unicorn type performance that if I did put it in this room with the advantages and the Bach, could I get better performance um, than I have now? So that's what I'm evaluating. And then of course, the difference in price is huge. <laughs> so value equation still, uh, stay tuned. Okay, uh, that's all I got to say on that. But what I wanted to tell you is in the description, I will have links to those playlists so you can enjoy those. And I'll have a lot more even from that trip. I have uh, another video I'm going to shoot for you. I told you about the inacoustic one, which that's going to probably be almost a month for me to put that all together. But also I visited Pete the Greek and I uploaded some shorts before I went to Munich, you're going to want to see his system. And I didn't want that to get lost in the shrapnel of all the coverage for Munich. So I'm going to be releasing that pretty soon as well. You're definitely going to want to see his house. That's a phenomenal house, a uh, phenomenal system, the technique speaker that I've always touted. Uh, he's got the Bach. He's got a home theater that's amazing. And some, le uh, some vintage gear that you never see. I mean, top-notch vintage gear too. So stay tuned for that. Sign up, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you back here soon.